There's a 42-year-old lady who was uh, um, um, involved in an uh, unfortunate altercation and sustained a twisting injury to the left middle finger. So this is uh, uh, for, for the students. Uh, this is how you approach an injured hand like this. So remember orthopedics is look, feel, move after you've taken the history. The history is clear. She had a twisting injury to the left middle finger and presents now with pain over the dorsal aspect of the left middle finger and otherwise healthy uh, middle-aged woman uh, with no comorbidities. When you look at her, the obvious thing to note is that there's generalized swelling, but it appears that most of the swelling is over the middle finger. Um, another thing to notice is that the alignment of the finger is, is uh, within acceptable limits. It's not grossly deviated. And very importantly, when you look at it end on, just come show from here, end on you can see all the nails are roughly uh, parallel to each other. There's no rotation abnormality uh, of the middle finger. Um, if it's uh, got a rotation abnormality, you'll see that the nail is tilted either in pronation or supination. So that's a look. When it comes to feel, um, I don't want to see the students doing generic feeling examinations like temperature and all that sort of stuff. That's, that's irrelevant. What you want to do, here's a patient with suspected fracture or dislocation. Something's happened to this finger. And what you want to do is you want to palpate the bony landmarks and ask the patient where is it sore, looking at her face. So is it sore over there? About over here somewhere. So it's not, she's actually not that tender, um, but the, the bony alignment and the joint alignment is acceptable. Um, that's really all you're looking for, uh, feeling for. You can also, if you really want to, you can feel for sensation, make sure there's no um, damage to the neurovascular structures and look at the circulation of the finger, which is adequate. Uh, when it comes to moving, you always start with active motion. So you can ask your patient to actively extend. And you can see she's got what we call an extensor lag of the PRP joint. It can only get to about uh, 15 degrees short of full extension, um, but she can get the MP joint into full extension. Then you're going to ask her to gently turn over. Once again, you can notice the bruising, uh, extensive bruising on the volar aspect of the hand, uh, the swelling over the uh, proximal pulp of the middle finger, uh, and uh, you're now going to ask her to actively move, make a fist. What you're looking for here is how much movement she's got, which is obviously limited, and also to make sure that there's no overlap of the fingers, because any rotation uh, as they flex will tend to overlap and get out of the normal alignment of the hand. Um, um, so the x-ray shows that she's got a, uh, uh, a long oblique fracture through the um, uh, proximal <coughs> fillings. The, fr the, the fracture line goes like that and it's displaced uh, with shortening and shift uh, but no tilt abnormality and no rotation abnormality. Um, she will need to be internally fixed because she needs stability so she can get moving. Um, the lady's uh, um, uh, x-ray, you can see the fracture of the uh, proximal phalanx of the left middle finger. This would be described as a, a long oblique, maybe even a spiral fracture. Um, so that is the position and the, and the bone that's involved. The next thing you have to talk about are the displacements. The displacements are short, shift, tilt, twist. You can give it fancy names, but that's why you must remember it. So here there is some shortening, very little, about one or two millimeters. There's shift, uh, about 25% shift uh, in the radial direction. There's no angular deformity uh, on the AP plane, so there's no uh, obvious tilt on this x-ray, and it does not appear to be in your rotation, but that's easier to see on the, uh, on the clinical examination. If we look at the lateral view, uh, you can see on the lateral view, you can see here there is uh, uh, some shortening, there is more shift, and now you can start seeing a little bit of tilt. So this is now tilted in a dorsal direction, apex volar angulation or dorsal tilt of the proximal phalanx. So you can see that this needs to be fixed uh, internally as this displacement is not acceptable.